With more than 30 years experience, Shaw Industries has become the leader in the manufacturing and distribution of carpets of the highest quality. Today, carpet accounts for more than 76% of all floor covering purchases in the United States, making it the floor covering of choice. That's because the carpet industry has always been able to meet the three basic needs of our customers. One, aesthetics. Developing products with colors and textures that blend with today's home decorating styles. Two, performance. Producing products that will stand up to traffic and reduce the noise level of any active household. And three, budget. Providing a variety of carpet prices to meet the customer's budget and lifestyle. We all know that carpet looks good, performs well, and is available in a variety of price ranges. Now, let's find out just what goes into the making of carpet. In the past, physically touring our mill was the only way you could see how carpet was made. Now, with the help of this video and our little fiber friend, you'll learn about the manufacturing process. This will help you be better prepared to help meet your customers' needs. You'll see how carpet begins with the creation of fiber and yarn before it's turned into a beautiful floor covering. Fiber manufacturing is the first step in the process of producing any carpet. There are two types of fibers used in the manufacture of carpet. Synthetic fibers, made from oil or natural gas, and natural fibers, made primarily of wool. All synthetic fibers begin with tiny pellets that are blended and heated to a liquid form known as polymer. The polymer is then forced through a spinneret containing several hundred minute holes, much like water is forced through a shower head. This process is called fiber extrusion. The fibers cool as they pass by the cooling tower and become solidified filaments. These filaments are stretched or drawn and bulked, resulting in a bulked continuous filament, or BCF, then wound onto cones and packaged for shipment to a yarn facility. Sometimes filaments are cut into 6 to 8 inch lengths after the drawing process. These filaments, called staple fiber, are baled and shipped to a staple yarn facility. The reason for producing both BCF and staple fibers has more to do with styling versatility. That's because different fibers produce different looking products. But what about branded and unbranded fibers? Branded fiber is simply a marketing tool to promote a fiber producer's name. And while it costs more for branded products, there is little difference in quality. So, the name value is the main difference between branded and unbranded carpet fibers and who actually offers the warranty. There are four primary fibers used by the carpet industry today. Nylon, polypropylene, polyester, and wool. Understanding the advantages and limitations of each fiber will enable you to help your customers make the best decision in purchasing carpet. The most widely used carpet fiber is nylon, representing nearly 60% of face fibers used in the United States. Nylon's excellent resilience, abrasion resistance, dyeing versatility, and styling flexibility make it the most popular choice of many consumers. Since 1985, polypropylene has become the fastest growing fiber in this country, representing about 30% of the total fibers used in the carpet industry. Polypropylene is naturally moisture resistant, so it's available only in a solution dyed form which offers some limitations in color. Commonly constructed in loop piles, polypropylene carpets offer exceptional value for your customers. Polyester which accounts for about 10% of the fibers used in the U.S. carpet industry, was first introduced in the mid-1960s. Since then, polyester has been well accepted for its bulkiness, soft hand, color clarity, as well as good stain and fading resistance. While not as resilient as nylon, polyester carpet, available mainly in staple form, offers good performance and value for your customers. Wool has been used for carpet longer than any other fiber. Wool is the most expensive carpet fiber, representing less than 1% of all broad loom carpet sales. 
The natural wool colors, ranging from off-white to black to earthen, are most commonly found in the type of carpet construction known as Berber. While not as resistant to abrasion and moisture absorption as synthetic fibers, natural wool offers long-term performance. The ability to keep its fresh beauty allows wool carpet to age gracefully. As you can see, there is a choice of fibers from which your customers can choose. Keep in mind, as you see the manufacturing process continue, carpet manufacturers construct products in ways that will help to overcome limitations in each particular fiber type. The next process will show us how fibers become the yarn we use as the foundation for all carpeting. More than any other variable, the selection of yarn will have a direct impact on the cost of the carpet. So it's important to understand the yarn manufacturing process, the assembling of fibers into a continuous strand. Remember, yarn may be composed of short, staple fibers, or continuous filament called BCF. First, let's see how staple fibers are manufactured into yarn. Yarns made from staple fibers are referred to as spun yarns. The staple fibers, primarily nylon and polyester, arrive at the spinning plant in these large 700-pound bales. Blending is the first process of converting staple fibers into tufting yarn. As the packages of raw material are opened and fed into a blending hopper, the fibers are mixed into a consistent lot or batch. Then, the blended fibers are transferred to a bale and packaged into 500-pound bundles ready to be moved to the next process. Carding is the process of straightening the various fibers. As the blended bales of fiber are fed into a hopper, they are shaken down onto a feed apron. The jumbled fibers are moved into a cylinder wire covered with sheet metal and thousands of tiny pins. The pins grab the fibers, combing then weaving them into a continuous strand called a sliver. This sliver is stacked in a can with one end hanging out at the top. The pin drafting process combines multiple cans into a large bunch and drafts it back down to a smaller size. This process continues to blend the fibers into a consistent lot while getting the fibers as parallel as possible and decreasing the weight of the fibers for optimal spinning. The spinning process twists and draws the sliver to its predetermined yarn size. The individual fiber ends from each can of sliver are drawn through rollers that turn at different speeds. This process makes the fiber smaller while beginning to twist the fiber to hold it together. The singles yarn is then fed onto a bobbin. Once full, these bobbins are removed from the frame and ready for the next process. The winding process takes the yarn from the bobbin and winds it onto a cone. The winder automatically knots the separate pieces of yarn together so that the cone remains continuous, without breaks, and maintains a consistent yarn size. Next. The twisting process gives yarn its character or style by twisting two or more yarns together. Here, two ends from single strands of yarn are threaded together through the twisting device and wrapped around each other to give it a spiral look. The more times they are wrapped around each other per inch, the higher the twist level. However, in order for twisted yarn to maintain its twist, it must go through a heat setting process. This process gives the yarn a permanent character or a memory to hold its twist so that the final carpet product will maintain its look or style. Different heat setting methods are used to give the carpet various looks and styles using dry or steam heat. Both heat setting methods feed the yarn directly from the cones through the heat setting unit. The yarn is heated to set the twist then wound back onto the cone ready for packaging and shipping to the carpet manufacturing facility. The main benefits of staple yarn are a tremendous flexibility in styling as well as good hand. But 
Because staple fibers have been cut into short lengths, each fiber has a different starting and stopping point along the yarn strand. That means when the yarn is cut during the tufting process, some even shorter, unattached fibers may appear on the surface of the carpet. This temporary shedding or pilling can easily be removed by vacuuming. Yarns made with continuous strands of fiber, or BCF, get to skip several of the steps used in manufacturing staple yarn. Because filament fiber arrives at the yarn plant already on cones, it only needs to be twisted and heat set. Some BCF yarns go through a process called air entangling, which combines multiple ends of the filament. As the filaments are passed through an air jet box, high pressure air mingles the filaments into one bundle. This process, typically used in making loop pile or Berber construction, increases color flexibility and it provides a way to make larger bundles of yarn by entangling two or more plies. Because every BCF fiber runs the continuous length of the cone of yarn, each fiber in the bundle cut by the carpet tufting process will be the same length. That means little, if any, pilling will be left on the finished carpet. Some products can be dyed prior to the manufacture of the finished carpet. Yarn dyeing is a pre-dyeing process used mainly in commercial products. All polypropylene, as well as some polyester and nylon fibers, are solution dyed. Color pellets are mixed with the fiber pellets, resulting in a colored fiber with a greater fade resistance. We've seen how raw material is manufactured into wonderful yarns of different fibers and colors. Now we're going to see how yarn turns into a beautiful carpet. There are three steps in the manufacture of carpet. Tufting, dyeing, and coating and finishing. The raw materials used in the manufacturing process include yarn, primary and secondary backings, dyes, latex, as well as chemicals used for stain, soil, or anti-static treatments. The first step in the carpet manufacturing process is tufting. There are several different types of tufting machines and enhancements used to create various patterns or carpet styles. The tufting process begins with creeling. Cones of yarn are placed on a rack behind the tufting machine, which looks much like a huge sewing machine. The yarn ends are fed into plastic tubes that run overhead and down between the feed rolls, then through 800 to 2,000 needles of the tufting machine. A primary backing, usually woven polypropylene, is fed through the machine as the tufting process continues. The primary backing provides a base cloth to hold the yarn in place. As the needles penetrate the primary backing, a looper holds the yarn while the needle withdraws from the backing. This is called loop pile construction. For cut pile construction, the looper rocks back against a knife, cutting the tufts as the needle begins another downward stroke. Tufting machines that produce cut and loop construction carpets are computer programmed to create a pattern using a mixture of cuts and loops. Within the tufting process, the three variables that control the construction of the carpet include pile height, which is the distance between the surface of the pile to the primary backing, stitch rate, which is the number of needle penetrations in a given distance, and gauge, which is the distance between needles. That means the closer the spacing, the tighter the gauge. Following the tufting process, the gray or undyed goods are taken to the dyeing area. If the yarn is pre-dyed, the goods go directly to coating and finishing, the final step in carpet manufacturing. Carpet dyeing provides greater color flexibility and lower cost. Tufted gray goods are generally dyed in one of several ways. Atmospheric bet dyeing, best used for smaller run sizes and heavier face weight products, involves rotating the undyed carpet in a stainless steel vat or beck filled with a heated dye liquid. Once the color is determined to be correct, the carpet is rinsed, then moved to a dryer where excess water is removed and stain chemical and fluorocarbon treatments are applied. Jet 
or pressure Beck dying is similar to the atmospheric Beck dying. However, these large pressure cooker type machines can raise the temperature of the dye liquid over the boiling point in order to increase the transferring of the dye molecules into the fibers of the carpet. This dye process is cost effective for polyester and nylon gray goods as well as larger lot sizes. Continuous dyeing is an extremely efficient process for larger run sizes and for producing multicolor or patterned effects. In this non-stop process, the carpet goes through the dyeing steps, dye application, dye setting or steaming, rinsing, stain application, fluorocarbon application, and drying, all in one operation line. Following the dyeing process, the carpet is inspected and ready for the final process, coating and finishing. While there are several steps in this process, generally all of them take place in a single production line. In the coating process, a secondary backing is added to the dyed, tufted carpet to provide dimensional stability. There are two main types of secondary backing, jute, a natural fiber, and synthetic. Synthetic backing made from polypropylene is the major secondary backing used by the carpet industry. A latex is used to bond both the primary and secondary backing together. The coating process also serves to anchor the tufts into the primary backing, which reduces fiber loss and excessive pilling, and prevents the carpet from fraying. Tuft bind, measured in pounds, determines how many pounds of pressure it takes to pull a yarn tuft from the backing. Color and patterns may be added to carpets by a screen printing process after the carpet is tufted and backed. Coating or backing these products before dyeing provides more stability during printing. Using multiple screens, the colors are printed from lightest to darkest in order to avoid layering of colors that may produce undesired effects in the carpet. During the finishing process, shearing removes loose or projecting fibers and surface lint from the face of the carpet fabric to achieve the desired tip definition of the yarn. A final inspection is made before the finished carpet is wrapped and sent to the distribution facility. As you've just seen, a lot goes into the manufacturing of fine carpets. And to think it all started with fiber. Without this little fiber, we couldn't meet those three basic needs of our customers. Remember, aesthetics, performance, and budget. Thanks for joining us on our tour of the carpet making process. We hope this video will help give you and your customers good information to make the right carpet purchasing decisions.